In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all the people see his glory. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord And all the people see his glory. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the third Sunday after the Epiphany is written in the second book of Kings, chapter 5. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, 
With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than any of the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. So Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, Wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Nations will fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth will fear your glory. For the The second lesson is written in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 8th chapter. Glory be to you. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cured of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. 
but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished and said to those following him, I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus. It's hard, at least for me, to have a great deal of sympathy for this centurion in our gospel for today. He asks our Lord for help, and our Lord offers to come to his house and help. The centurion tells him not to bother, that his command, his word, will be enough. And we're supposed to be impressed by this faith that trusts the word of God in Christ. But here's the thing. You and I don't get the chance to walk up to Christ in the flesh 
and ask him for help, nor do we ever get an offer from him to come to our houses and heal our sick family and friends. We only start where the centurion left off. All we'd ever ask for is a command from heaven to drive off disease. We know that Jesus has the power and the authority to do so, but we don't get it. We've got doctors and drugs and modern equipment, but no miracles. And there are hosts of diseases and disorders that they can't cure. We have plenty of loved ones buried in the ground or tormented by pain or chronically enduring hardship that simply breaks our hearts. Enduring these hardships, these sorrows, takes its toll on our flesh and blood. It weighs us down to pray and pray and never seem to get what we ask. Is it any wonder that we're so tired or that we harbor doubts? That we're afraid to get our hopes up? There's simply too many in the cemetery already. Too many children in the hospital. Too many divorces. Too many wars. Too many bullies, liars, and cheats. If only the politicians were confined to Washington. But no, they surround us at work and at school and in church. If only we could go home and find peace, but no. There, too, the reality is less than the ideal. How many times have we stood beside the bedside of our loved ones looking for a miracle, dreaming of a miracle, never really expecting that a miracle will come, though? We know the stories from the Bible and we believe them, but we've never seen an actual miracle. The centurion believed and got his miracle. The Lord was willing to help to heal the leper. But we might ask, what about those in the cancer ward? What about diabetes and congestive heart failure? What about autism and Alzheimer's? Dear Christian friends, repent. It's hard to live by faith. It's hard to go the narrow way, for the way of the cross is full of sorrow. At the proper time, the centurion received a gift from God. His gifts are his to give as he pleases. Or are you envious because he is generous? Would you take this man's servant away from him? Or deny the leper his miracle because you didn't get yours? Your heart aches and your tears fill your cup at night. You know the emptiness, the gnawing pain of jealousy and envy. Your mind has gone dark and stupid with anger and disappointment. You've been afraid to hope. But God loves you. He knows what troubles you. Because he has worn your skin. He has walked in your shoes. He has borne your burdens. He hears and answers your prayers. Your time will come. And I don't think you would want to change places with the centurion anyway. Lots of reasons why, but at least one is that the centurion had no pl other place to turn but to Jesus. Ancient doctors were pretty worthless. They didn't know much and they had little in the way of medication and almost nothing that actually worked. It's not likely that either the centurion or his servant ever lived past the age of 60. Their lives were hard. By our standards, they lived in absolute poverty. They were no strangers to back-breaking manual labor, to hunger, to uncertainty and fear. They had very little, if any, freedom. The servant was probably what we would call a slave. And the centurion himself was a man under authority. His life was cheap to his masters. The word that he got from Jesus that day was about all that he had. 
while he could have gone to the synagogue once a week and heard something from the prophets, even if he could read, which he probably couldn't, he couldn't read the Bible. There weren't many Bibles, for one thing. There weren't printing presses, and paper was expensive. But he was a Gentile, an outsider. He wasn't allowed to handle the, the sacred word. On top of that, the Bible wasn't even finished when he lived. So, so this single word from Jesus was precious to him. Outside of that, he simply had to remember what he had heard on Saturday. But that's not the case with you. You have doctors who can do real good. You have hospitals and equipments and pharmaceuticals. Your, your life expectancy is the longest the world has ever known in the generations following the flood. You're not a slave, you're free, but best of all, you have the word of God. Jesus is in your home. Anytime you want, you can pick up Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. You can read the apostolic word in its entirety. You can hear the words of Jesus. You can see them printed in red print in your Bibles. Learn to read them. Learn to treasure them as you would treasure having Jesus himself walk through your door. There is more healing for those who read the Bible, more miracles, more comfort than you even know. Of course, that's no reason to stop praying for miracles. This authority and power does belong to Jesus. And he has promised that whatever you ask in his name, he will give you. He may give it to you now. Or he may hold it for you in heaven. But he will give it. In the meantime, you live by faith. That is, you live by every word that proceeds from his mouth. And he has given a word. He has said a word that you may be healed. He has sent a servant under his authority to speak to you, to absolve you of your sins. So that you may now actually rest in the forgiveness of sins and in the hope to come in things unseen. For what is hard for the flesh and blood is not revealed by flesh and blood, nor was it revealed to flesh and blood. For God's Spirit has revealed himself to your spirit by water and by word. He has called you by name. He has fed you with his holy body and blood. By that Holy Spirit you call Jesus your Lord. And you do know him who is the way, the truth, and the life, your good shepherd, your door to life. And you wait for him, believing that the redemption he obtained for you by his innocent death and death, he has obtained for you. And you will be delivered on the last day. The dead will rise. The mortal will put on immortality. Every tear, every sorrow, and every pain will be removed, for Jesus did not die in vain. He died for you. And his resurrection is no mere myth. It is the foundational reality of the entire universe. Jesus is Lord. He is your Lord by faith and he loves you and forgives you. He will not forget you. Let it therefore also be to you as you believe. Your day will come. You will get your miracles at last. You will not always be disappointed. You will soon know joy and laughter and peace for you are the fulfillment of his prophecy. The Lord has called you. He said, come, and you came. You have come from the east and from the west. You were no people. Now you are the people of God. 
And who were Gentiles, the hostile nations that hated God's people, but now you are Christians with God's name upon you. And then he says, go, and you go, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them, teaching them, bearing witness to who he is. You do this in all kinds of quiet ways at home and at work and by your offerings and sacrifices here and elsewhere. And so it is that you, O Christian, dearly beloved of the Father, with whom he is well pleased, you will sit with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You will sit and eat and drink without money and without cost. You will sit with Naaman, with the healed leper, this centurion and his servant. Sit with all the saints and bask in the wonderful grace that comes from the lamb who was slain, but now lives. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius
Please stand for prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Gentiles and unbelievers of many coastlands, that they may know the righteousness of the Most High and see his glory in Christ incarnate, and that false gods would be abandoned and Christ Jesus alone be worshipped and sought, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the great word of the prophets and apostles, that we may not despise it, but in spite of all appearances, gladly receive its wisdom and promises, doing as Christ commands, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the gift of holy baptism, by which we are healed from sin's corruption and saved by Christ's power, that we would love his great word and name, by which plain water became for us a life-giving stream, and that we would not forget our baptism, but treasure it as Christ's trustworthy promise, and so arise to newborn life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our leaders, civil servants, and soldiers, that they may serve with loyalty, honorable authority, and uprightness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, that Christ, who has stretched out his hand to give eternal salvation and can make us clean, healing every disease, would be pleased to relieve every sorrow, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who commune this day, that in Holy Communion we may receive the forgiveness of sins and be bound together to live in harmony with one another. And as far as it depends on us, live peaceably with all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, strengthen and preserve our faith in Christ Jesus, by whom we also are welcomed to recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as true Israelites. When our last hour comes, welcome us as brothers and sisters of Christ, baptized into his name, and therefore as sons of your kingdom by grace. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son, in him being found in the substance of our mortal nature. You have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, you have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You lifted Noah and his family in the ark. You promised to bless all nations through Abraham. You delivered Moses and the Israelites. You renewed your promises through the prophets. And now you have spoken through your Son, who in words and deeds proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will. In your tender mercy, you gave him your one and only Son, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. By the one offering of himself, he made there a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Father, remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We humbly thank you for this wonderful gift of salvation through your Son's own body and blood. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor be yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.